This is the second video about the Wessel Flute Ferret, showing you how to put it together and get it ready for use. It arrives in a cardboard tube, so I'll just take it all out and assemble it. We've got the probe, we've got a bag of bits, um, <clears throat> and we've got the indicator here. Now in the bag there's a syringe which you probably won't need unless you live overseas. We'll talk about that in a minute. Got a, another piece of loose tube and we've got three legs, just little bits of rod. Um, you just push those into the holes in the bottom of the indicator unit there to make it stand up and be stable. So that's all ready. Um, there's a piece of tube which you can just slide off here, off these um, outlet tubes here. Keep that, it's just a piece of packaging, but you might need it if you ever want to travel around with this. So I'll explain what that's for as well. <clears throat> the first thing to do then is connect this piece of tube with the, the red end is the end that you'll be putting into your mouth. So we'll connect the other end to either outlet, doesn't matter which one. Just feed it right on, make sure you don't nick the tubing. And of course it must never get kinked, this tube. It's rather apt to being kinked, but don't let it. Um, the reason that's red is so that you can easily see it on a cluttered bench. When you've got all your tools laid out, it's surprising how difficult it is to find things. And um, so by colouring it red, it just shows up better, that's all. Um, and also get into the habit of wiping it down and keeping it fairly clean because that is going to go into your mouth. If there's more than one operator involved using the same bit of kit, then it's a good idea to keep some um, uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, IPA handy so that you can disinfect it. In these COVID conscious times, we can't be too careful. OK, now before attaching the probe, I'm just going to show you how I actually use this. The first video mentioned uh, uh, that this worked on pressure, and so it does. And the pressure is supplied by you from your mouth. And what you do is put that in your mouth and then just suck very, very gently. I'm going to do it first without the probe so that you can get used to this sucking idea. So put it in. It's just a very gentle suck. Any more than that, and the water will go shooting over the top. So be careful. You can blow if you prefer, and the water columns will simply move the other way. But sucking is better. I think you have a little bit more control. And the amount of movement you need is about four or five inches. That's enough. So that's the that's what you're going to be doing when we get around to testing a flute. That's the method. OK, so the other piece of tube, which is already attached to the probe, now goes on to the other little outlet on the indicator. So just push that on there. It's now all ready to be used. And that's the bit that will go down inside the flute. And when I've got a flute here in the next video, I'll show you exactly how to use it. So just a little bit more <clears throat> on the indicator itself. I mentioned it's filled with water, and so it is. It's coloured water, and that will stay there for years. But after about five years, possibly, it might have lost a little bit due to evaporation, in which case you might want to top it up. And you can top it up with just with distilled water, just a few drops. And the way to do that is to take one of these screws out, doesn't matter which one, either, and only one, put a few drops of distilled water in here, uh, tuck the tube down inside and just shove it in. It couldn't be easier. For those of you living abroad, this will have to be shipped to you by air transport. And at the moment, regulations don't allow anything to be sent with water inside. Besides which, if it went into the hold of an aircraft, I suppose there's always a chance it might freeze. And goodness knows what damage that would do. So I send them out empty and it's up to you to make up the solution. And it's all covered in the instructions which come with this. But just to tell you, it is basically distilled water plus a few drops of dishwasher 
rinse aid that's something you buy from the supermarket it's a blue liquid and it stops the uh, water being kind of sticky as it, if you just use plain water it won't want to go up and down these tubes at all easily but put a little rinse aid in it breaks down the surface tension and you'll find that the water can slip up and down just nicely so just a few drops of that and then if you want to you could put a couple of drops of ordinary fountain pen ink with it as a dye just so that the water shows up you could use food dye or whatever else you can get hold of but very very little and um, that will just make the uh, make the water a bit more visible not compulsory it's up to you and the amount you need is exactly three and a half mil which would be marked on the syringe about half a syringe for so you mix up the solution in a teacup or something and then draw some up into here and take out one of those screws it doesn't matter which put the tube right down inside and just press the syringe and that will fill this up do it fairly slowly and it will fill it up to about the halfway point I mentioned this spare little bit of tube here now this is entirely for if you want to travel around with this gadget if you do then you'll probably be taking off those tubes you'll want to take out the legs which you can do with a pair of pliers and then yes the function of this is simply to inhibit the water moving about during transit um, because this thing won't remain vertical <clears throat> it's bound to get turned on its side or even upside down and this will stop the water running out so what i do is i feed on one end give it a a, a good old twist a good revolution or two like that and then put the other end on the reason for the twist is simply to to put a, a, a big kink in the tube so that it's it, water or air can't go down it now <clears throat> what happens then is that if you do turn it upside down um, or on its side the water is kind of inhibited it will flow down but it won't flow right out uh, <clears throat> if I tip it upside down no harm is done the water will simply run down to the other end so, for instance, I mean, if, if it's going in a, in a briefcase or something like that, it will probably get turned like that. And then when you come to use it again, once you stand it back up on its feet, the water will slowly run down to where it should be. Like that. And then you can take off this spare piece of tube like that. The important thing is, though, that you don't get any little droplets of water hanging about inside these connecting tubes here because if they do it will inhibit the movement of the water and uh, the way to check it is to get the the piece of pipe here this piece of tube <coughs> put it on and then just suck the water up and down a few times and make sure that it returns to zero that's fine if it doesn't quite return to zero, in other words, if when you stop sucking, there's a difference in height in the two columns, it invariably means there's a little tiny bit of water trapped up here. The way to remove it is just with this sucking and blowing alternately, and then it will soon clear and the problem goes away. So that's that. I think I probably said enough. Um, after a few years, you may find that you get a build-up of residue inside these tubes, a bit of, well, it won't be chalk if you use distilled water, but it's surprising, you know, you get some stains and stuff. You might want to clean it, and you can use, for that, you can use a pipe cleaner. You need a big, a big fat pipe cleaner, something like that, or a little miniature bottle brush if you've got one. Uh, take out the two screws, and then just work the cleaner up and down a few times, and that will wash it all out and well you could flush the whole thing out under a tap if you want to but don't let any hard water linger about in the tubes um, if you do that will eventually lead to chalk deposits so it's best to wash it out with distilled water you can and then when you put the screws back be very careful not to cross the threads because they're steel stainless steel screws but they're going into plastic and it's ever so easy to get the, the threads crossed so be very careful with that just 
screw them up very gently by hand and then finally with a screwdriver there's a rubber washer underneath each one so that they remain airtight make sure the screws are tight uh, and that's about it um, the probe itself doesn't require any maintenance at all but it's quite a good idea every now and then to put a little talcum powder on the rubber here rubber being what it is it doesn't much like sliding about in tubes in metal tubes um, so in a way the dirtier it is the more easily it will slide but you don't want to use ordinary dirt you want to use something sort of like talcum powder or chalk It'll just just a very very fine dusting of that blow off any excess um, and then it will slide up and down quite easily that knob there should be screwed backwards to uh, uh, come up against this brass nut at the end that's that's in a state now where it will pass down the tube to lock it in the tube you do it up hard the other way but I'll be showing you that later <laughs>